Welcome back, Chocolateites. Uh, beautiful 1981 Gibson Les Paul Custom today. Probably the nicest Les Paul Custom I've played in quite a while. Uh, this one, uh, it, I guess it classifies as player's grade, but it could still kind of be a collector's guitar if you don't mind a few changes. Uh, this, this guitar is fantastic, guys. I uh, I plugged it in, and it it has that sound. It's just uh, an awesome rock machine. Uh, Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll is the song that came to my mind when playing this thing, and it just nails that tone through a nice Marshall. But this thing is beautiful. Uh, wine red customs typically aren't as desirable as like a tobacco or a. I guess some people like the naturals. Uh, cherry sunbursts are another one, typically that aren't as popular. But this wine red is, this has got to be the nicest wine red custom I've seen. Uh, pictures definitely do not do this guitar justice. There's a lot of dark mineral streaking kind of in the top, as you can see here. And that just looks terrific with the, uh, the color and the top. It's just a really nice guitar. Uh, I had never really seen a wine red like this before, and after taking the pick guard off and the stop bar and the tailpiece, I guess I'm looking for the word bridge, uh, the finish was actually, you know, a very dark wine red. I mean, similar to the back, you can see how dark the back is. My, my iPad makes it look almost black, but th the top used to be that exact same color, but it's kind of obviously faded away for the most part and kind of leaves this uh, maroon kind of almost a mahogany look to it it just it looks terrific I love it I love this faded wine red it looks awesome uh, this guitar for the most part is original I mean there were a few things that were you know player grade mods that will go over here all right first change uh, the tuners were the exact same style when I got it, but they weren't the Gibson branded ones, so I, uh, I actually restored this custom. Something I don't usually do, but this one's nice enough. I had a, a set of original late 70s, early 80s Gibson branded Schallers. So I put that back on this custom. Uh, the gold hardware is obviously tarnished on the front side, but the tuners are still nice and good, but they do have some light tarnishing as well. So it is restored back to stock. I could tell you those were 100% original and you'd never know any different. But I'll be honest, I did restore this one back to originality on that. So you got some very light string change marks on the headstock. And uh, I guess you just, you know, your average wear and tear. There we go. See it on the light there. But the, the binding has aged to this beautiful golden hue, and I love it. Same thing on the body. So it's kind of interesting. The finish is faded, but instead of fading, this one just aged more yellow, which is, I guess it makes sense because the uh, UV rays uh, make it darker. Uh, nut has been replaced. Uh, yeah, this one, EAD, the G string here. I would argue the, the nut slot was cut just a tiny little bit too deep. So you kind of get that buzzy sound, but once you fret, it's okay. But, you know, plugged in, I didn't notice it, but I, you know, if you want to get that redone, that's up to you. Honestly, I don't think it's bad enough to, you know, worry about it. But definitely a replaced nut, not sure what it's made of. Um, ebony fretboard has been refretted with, uh, I guess the seller to me said they were medium jumbos, but they're definitely large frets. So if you're not a fan of large frets, which honestly this guitar plays awesomely, you could always take this to your luthier and since they're large, you can uh, plane them down to your own, you know, particular tastes. But the refret process wasn't perfect. You do have some very light chipping in the ebony fretboard. That's very common on an ebony board refret. So you got a few right there. Oh, 
let's see here. There we go, turn the brightness up and you can kind of see very small chips, nothing major. And it's not on every single fret, but you can, you can see where the work was done. And something that's interesting is these frets aren't dirty. They actually refretted it with gold wire, which is interesting. I had never personally seen that on anything before. But I think the uh, Les Paul Fort Knox had gold fret wire. But very cool. I mean, it's not like a, a super gold or anything. But, you know, I, I cleaned them with steel wool. They definitely are not the typical silver color. So I think that's kind of cool. You got gold strap locks on that. That is a replacement part. But other than that, uh, other than the nut frets and strap locks and obviously restored tuners, it's all original. Which means you have the awesome Tim Shaw pickups in here. Uh, they got the date stamp. They're 81s, just like the guitar. Same thing with the tone pots in there. They're all 81s as well as the volume pots. Obviously, you've got play wear on the front. And you got some on here, but you know, nothing too major on this one. I mean, you've got some dings, but just light, you know, playing scratches. I mean, most of these could polish out and you wouldn't even know they are ever there. But you're going to play this thing, so don't worry about it. That's just a little bit of lemon oil. So this, this guitar is perfect. It's aged. It's, it's that perfect age job and it's all natural. Beautiful speed knobs aged naturally once again. Such a beautiful guitar and it's got a 60s profile neck but it's got just a little bit more to it because typically these uh, late 70s early 80s customs have these really 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 thin necks and while they're good I personally prefer just a little bit more, and this one's got it. It's got just that little bit extra that really makes it super comfortable to play. As you can see, the serial number there, 81, very late 81. A Nashville made, made in USA. Once again, now you've got the Gibson branded shawlers on here. And there was a sticker here at one point in time. Once you kind of get it in the light, you can see that. Uh, shadow I guess you could call it that that was likely a a store sticker like Trogley's guitars they used to do that back in like the 70s and 80s for whatever reason uh, being a late 81 there actually is no volute here but it does feel a little thicker than normal so this is kind of a transitional one between the volutes versus no volute so it's a, it feels a little thicker here but there's no, you know, pronounced volute or anything like that. So once again, beautiful neck. Definitely still a 60s profile, but just with a little bit more than compared to other 70s and 80s customs I've had. There is a tiny little ding there. It looks You do still have the uh, three-piece uh, maple neck, though. I think, uh, I think it's late 82, 83 or so they switched over to mahogany. So now I've got the back of the guitar. That's kind of cool. I've never seen that before until just now. The wood grain there kind of makes like a, an O slash a G or C. That's kind of cool. I like that. But you've got some buckle wear on the back here. Nothing too extreme. Nothing destroying the finish. But you've got some nicks and dings. As to be expected. I mean, this thing is an awesome player. This screw here is not really screwing into anything. The wood kind of chipped in there, which is also very common. So it's just kind of there. I don't think it's going to fall out on you, though. But full disclosure, that is there. You also got a little scratch. But it maintains a clean appearance, and that's the most important thing to me. Clean appearance. So once again, you got that little ding on the neck, but you don't feel it. I guess we'll show you the frets here. Medium jumbos to jumbo. Definitely a lot taller than they originally were, and I was once again I was playing this guitar. It feels great. Uh, I mean, now if you run your fingers up and down, it can be a little sharp. But they were they were profiled enough to the point where I did not experience any trauma. 
while playing the guitar. But depending on how you play, you might want to get them uh, shaped up a little better to your liking. But I just always say that on refrets because everybody's playing style is different. It didn't affect me, but you know, you might have different uh, techniques. I guess you got a little dent there. And just light wire. This guitar is awesome. I love it. Definitely one of my favorite customs that's come through this year. I would probably put it in the uh, what top five. Definitely one I would consider keeping if I needed a player. Because this thing, I mean, all the maintenance has been done for you. It's already been aged naturally. It has that sound, and it's been refretted. It's good for another 40 years plus. It's awesome. I love it. So, if you think you might be interested in owning this beautiful Les Paul Custom, which I think you should definitely consider because this is one of the nicest customs I've had in the shop in a long time. I know I've been saying that a lot, but there's something special about this one, guys. Feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. You can also check out the Reverb and or eBay listings. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see all the guitars I have for sale and when they come for sale. All right, we'll catch you later, Chocolate Bites. Bye.